thanks for joining me today. I'm going to talk a little bit today and show you some techniques on how to effectively bleed the clutch on a MG. Now this technique uh, is good for many other vehicles as well, but the MGs have a reputation of being notoriously difficult to get the air out of the hydraulic clutch system. But there's a very simple method that I'm going to show you that I've been using for about 35, 40 years. And it's much better than the uh, other techniques that you might see. Now you could try this out for yourself, see if it works for you. But this is how I've been doing it and I've been 100% effective. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so let's begin. So we have to start with some basic theory to show you how the hydraulic clutch works and the reason why some of the traditional methods of bleeding don't. So without getting too much into detail on Pascal's law and the theory of hydraulics, basically you have a small volume in your master cylinder that's amplified into a larger volume and surface area inside your slave cylinder. Now the action of pushing on your master cylinder will push a small volume of fluid down into your slave cylinder, which will be amplified, and then it will be able to push your clutch in and relieve the pressure on the pressure plate. The traditional methods of bleeding involve having somebody sit in the car, working the pedal, pushing, holding, and releasing the bleeder valve. Now, this works well on a brake system because it has a larger volume mass of cylinder relative to the caliper or the, uh, uh, the, the brake cylinder on the rear. Now, the reason this doesn't work on the clutch cylinder is if you get an air bubble trapped inside the system, there's two things that make a difference here. One is when you push on this mass of cylinder, the spring from the pressure plate is pushing back on the slave cylinder. When you crack the bleeder valve, the pressure is probably going to come from the mass of cylinder first and the bleeder, I'm sorry, the uh, pressure plate second, and it's going to kind of squeeze in both directions. Okay, so then you tighten your bleeder valve, release the pressure, and then it kind of pulls both ways. This will pull back and then this will relieve back into the transmission. Now, if you have an air bubble trapped, by doing that, all you it really end up doing is moving that air bubble back and forth. Now, I've had very limited success with using devices, uh, pressure bleeders, suction bleeders such as this, um, a very, uh, very, very poor results I've gotten over the years using those. So I've given up on that long time ago. The method I'm going to show you involves simple things, two sockets and a C-clamp. Now, the trick to it, again, because this is a larger volume, what we're actually going to end up doing is working backwards. We're going to bleed from this side, not from this side. So it would help to have an assistant because, again, with the volumes, this volume is much smaller than that volume. So we're going to be losing a lot of fluid. So you really need somebody to stand by to do your refills. Okay, so communication is the key. This is very important. You don't want to introduce any more air into the system from this side. So the procedure is fairly simple. Done properly, it should take you no more than maybe 20 to 30 minutes. Now, assuming your car is already either on a lift or on jack stands, either way, whatever your preference is, we, um, uh, we're going to remove the slave cylinder from the transmission. Now this is the later model with the, uh, the pin, the single pin, the other side have the two uh, ears on it. Either way, it doesn't matter, whatever the method is. Remove it from the transmission. Remove the, the, uh, the boot, okay? And what you have is now you're going to expose the piston. And that piston is on a spring, and that's going to be important a little bit later. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take uh, I have a 14 millimeter socket, doesn't really matter the size particularly. It's just going to fit into here. So we're going to push this in. We're going to take our C-clamp 
and we're going to clamp, whoops, we're going to clamp the cylinder, and I clamp it right here on the bleeder because it's not really going to matter that much, to be honest with you. Uh, we're not going to use the bleeder with the clamp anyway. It doesn't need to be real tight. It just needs to hold it, okay? So then what you're going to do is you're going to push on the, the pedal a, a couple of times like standard, and then you're going to crack the line right here at the master cylinder, and you're going to see some air bubbles come out. Once you've done that, that's fine. Tighten it back up, and you're done with this for now. Don't even worry about the pedal in the car. We'll get to that at the very last. Now, the next thing you want to do is take your clamp loose, set that to the side. All right, take your longer socket. In this case, this is a deep well, uh, what is it, deep well 12. Again, it doesn't matter. You want to put this over the end like this because you're going to be pushing on it. Now, open the bleeder valve. And while you're doing this, just make sure this is hand tight, okay? So you're going to open the bleeder valve, and you're going to push that piston all the way in till it stops. And you're going to see a bunch of air bubbles and stuff come out. When it's all the way down, tighten it back up. Now, this is where your assistant is going to help you, okay? As you release this, it's going to pull fluid from the master cylinder, into here and remember I said there's a volume difference so as this is slowly and you can go very slowly there's no hurry go slowly release it have your assistant continue to fill this with fluid until this is out now you don't want to it's not going to come all the way out on its own so don't worry about it and there's no precise how far it needs to go um, just make sure you don't push on the brake pedal with this exposed so what you're going to do is the same thing again. You're going to open your bleeder. You're going to push on the piston. You're going to see fluid and air come out. When you're all the way down, tighten it up. Again, slowly start releasing pressure. Have your assistant continue to fill the master cylinder. And then out again, and that's going to draw the fluid down and into the slave cylinder. Now, what this does is if there's any trapped air anywhere in the system, it's going to pull the air in that one direction, and it's going to pull it to the uh, slave cylinder. So you do this a total of four times. I know you can do it three. I always do it four just to be sure, okay? On the fourth time when you open this, you should see nothing but clear fluid come out. Tighten it down and release it. Okay, now make sure again your master cylinder is full. Now remove your long socket, take your short socket, place it back in there, push it a little bit. Now remember, if you're pushing on this, the fluid's going to go backwards, so make sure you have plenty of uh, rags and paper towels up here to collect the overflow. It is going to get a little bit messy. So then you apply your, uh, apply the clamp. Again, it doesn't need to be uh, super tight. You don't need the Kung Fu grip on it. Just hold it there. Uh, what we're trying to do is keep that uh, piston from popping out. Now, get into the car and push on that clutch pedal. Now, when you push on that clutch pedal, because this is, this is uh, uh, fixed and it can't move, and assuming there's no air in the system now, you won't be able to push that clutch pedal. You're gonna push on it, it's gonna feel really, really, really tight because that fluid can't move anywhere and there's no air bubble in the center to make it feel mushy and absorb. So when you do that and you, and you feel it and it's nice and tight, then you're done. What you do is you remove your C-clamp, remove your socket, do not forget to remove your socket, Replace the rubber boot and reinstall into the transmission. Work the pedal a couple times and make sure you're topped out on your fluid. And then you're done. Okay. This works 100% of the time. What it does is two things. I've mentioned before, it pushes all the air bubbles in one direction only. It makes sure that you have a full volume of fluid and no air can actually enter the system at any time. The second thing it does with the clamp at the end of it 
when you get that hard pedal, you can be 100% sure now you have no air, your slave cylinder is good, and your master cylinder is good. Now, when you reinstall it into the car, you're ready for your drive. Now, if you forget your clamp, or if somebody pushes the pedal while you have this exposed and the piston pops out, it's not the end of the world, honestly. Um, just take some brake clean, clean the piston off that came out, make sure it's nice and clean, put some fresh fluid in there, pop it back in. But unfortunately, you're going to have to start the whole process over from the beginning. But I've done this uh, on MGs. I've done it on many other vehicles. This works 100% of the time. It eliminates the variable of your clutch spring, of your pressure plate spring working backwards, counteracting what you're trying to do here, and it eliminates the small volume problem inside your master cylinder. So there you go. Very simple, only takes a few tools, most of which you probably have around the house. Um, if not a, a C-clamp, uh, you can buy one at Harbor Freight or wherever, it doesn't matter, cheap ones work just fine and then have an assistant. Now, I just did a clutch on this car. I had the engine out, and with the engine out, I was able to actually sit inside the engine compartment and do this uh, while it was still inside the car, and I, I could work a little bit more comfortably. But either method works. Either method works, but the key is, again, remove this from the transmission and flush it from this end. So there you have it, a very simple, 100% uh, effective uh, clutch bleeding technique. You've eliminated your air bubbles and you've verified that your components are working all at the same time. And again, it should take you anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes to complete and then go out and have some fun with the twisties. All right, well, there you have it. A very simple uh, clutch bleeding technique. Again, I've been using this for about 35 years with 100% success. Uh, it seems like it may be a little extra work, but you know, spending three or four days in frustration and throwing things across the shop and cussing and swearing because you can't bleed it out, it's well worth spending that half an hour. So thank you very much for joining me today. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I will try to get back to you as much as possible. But thank you and have a safe day.